Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you quite a few different techniques. We're going to show you how to do two different wafer paper techniques, printed wafer paper techniques, how to add some texture, some impression to your fondant, how to dust gold onto your cake, and then finally, how I added the luster to the fondant. So stick around, we'll get right to it. First thing we're going to do is make our wafer paper decorations. What I did here was I used my um, edible printer, which I know not everybody has access to, but a lot of grocery stores will make prints for you as long as you aren't doing anything that's copyrighted. So I found an image online and I just printed it directly onto my wafer paper. I don't know if you've noticed, but I tend to have a liking, a very serious liking for this marble type look. It's what, for my paintings, I like this also. So what I'm using is just a hole puncher, and I am cutting out these holes out of the wafer paper. Now I did two to three sheets of the wafer paper, and this is what it looks like. Now, to store your wafer paper while you are working with it, just put it in a Ziploc bag so that it does not dry out. Pull out the amount of um, circles that you need to work with at a time. And when you're just gonna fold these in half. Now, I did two different ways. I did some of them where I folded the uh, pattern on the inside and some of them where I folded the pattern on the outside. I'm just showing you how I did it on the inside. Now, just fold them all in half so you have them all ready and lined up to go. Now this takes quite a few of them, so just take your time and fold them. Now I'm using some edible glue, some wafer paper glue, and all that is is scraps of wafer paper with some water, just enough to dilute it, put in your microwave for about 10 seconds and until it has melted into the water. You know, you can do another session of 10 seconds if you need more. And just brush that on to the edge and then line up your half circles, staggered as long as you want. I wouldn't go too long because I find if you go a little too long with it, it kind of loses the shape that you're going for here. Now I also did the opposite direction because the way we're going to assemble these, I'm gonna call them leaves. They look like leaves to me. Um, you have to have a mirror image. So do the same amount of half circles, the opposite direction and set those aside to, to dry. It doesn't take long, maybe in half an hour, 45 minutes for those to dry before you can assemble them. In the meantime, I went ahead and added chocolate ganache, which is just a ratio of two to one, two parts dark chocolate to one part heavy cream, melted together, and then mixed together till it's smooth and set aside till it cools down a little bit so that you can use it as a crumb coat. And then put that back in your refrigerator to firm up while we are assembling these quote unquote leaves. Now I just did a line of the edible glue, wafer paper glue down the side, and just press the two pieces together. Now you need to add enough of that glue so they stick together, but you don't want to add so much that it soaks your paper. There's a fine line there. And do that to all of your pieces. I did mm, maybe seven of them. And just set those aside. I set them aside overnight to dry. It doesn't really take that long, but you know, time-wise, that's what worked out for me for this cake. And now we're gonna do the other wafer paper decoration. And these are just little petals. I used just floral wire, and I just bent it into the shape. And then I put two pieces upside down of the wafer paper, print side down on the table. Make sure your table is dry, otherwise it will ruin the pattern. And I'm just brushing some more of that edible glue onto the wire. And I just staggered them on the paper. Utilize as much of that paper as you can. And just hold them down until they hold onto the paper. And do that with all of them. And once you get them all down, brush the other side of the wire with that same edible glue. And then take your second piece, 
face up and press it down on top of the previous piece of paper. And what that will do is add your pattern to both sides of your petal. And just kind of press it down. Don't rub so hard that it um, you rub through the paper. Just make sure that it has adhered. And then move them to the side to dry. And those I let dry overnight also. So this here is the next day. And I'm adding a little Tylos to my fondant. And use a little cornstarch, roll it out into a log. And I measured the circumference and the height of my cake so I knew how big of a piece I needed. And I did, it was a six inch cake, three layers of cake, and then the bottom tier was a seven inch cake, I believe, with four layers of cake. And then this impression mat, I will add a link to on where you can get this. And I'm just brushing it with cornstarch also. Reverse them, put the mat on the bottom. This is what works better for me. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it fondant on the bottom um, and the mat on top and then roll it. But I just find that I like to feel where the pattern has been pressed down. I feel like I get a better result if I can feel it with my hands. And then just pull that mat away. Spend some time making sure that you get that pattern impressed onto your fondant. And make sure that you don't roll out your fondant so thin to begin with that you're gonna press through it. Leave it about of a quarter of an inch thick. And then I set that aside to firm up. It's so much easier to transfer fondant once it is firmed up. Otherwise, it pulls and stretches and you lose your pattern. That's why timing is key with cake decorating. Do the things that need more time first. And then this cake is just pulled out directly from my refrigerator and all I'm doing is just using that fluffy brush, dipping it right into the gold luster dust and just using circle patterns and patting onto your, um, your chocolate ganache. You do not need to add any kind of a liquid to the powder to get a nice pretty gold covering. If you want to, you can add Everclear or luster dust, or I'm sorry, or um, vodka, or even lemon extract, or um, there are some other products, what's it called, um, rejuvenating spirits, but I think you can only get that in Europe. That will give you a much shinier metallic gold if you want that, but I find that this is pretty as is, and it's a time saver. Honestly, it's a time saver. And then I'm just adding a little shortening onto the back of that piece of fondant to get it to stick. And just lift it up since it has been sitting there and firming up, it's very easy to lift it up. It didn't stretch and pull at all. And once I got that where I wanted it, then I am just ripping to give the edges to give it an uneven, more abstract, rustic kind of feel. You could leave it with a smooth cut edge if you want. If you're going for a more classic, clean look, clean, that's not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I'm saying. Sophisticated, classic look, you can do that. I tend to go more towards the abstract, though. And then do the exact same thing on your top tier. I didn't show me making that piece of fondant because it's the exact same as the bottom tier. And you don't need to see all my footage or you'll be watching my video for a very long time. And trust me, this is about three hours worth of footage. So some things I just select to leave out because you've already seen me do it. Now I'm just adding my boba tea straws for support to the top tier. I have three of them. Um, since this isn't going anywhere, I feel good with three. If I were doing this for an order, I'd probably add five. Just cut them flush to the top, use some ganache, as a glue to stick your bottom tier and your top tier together. And I had chilled that top tier in the refrigerator for a good half an hour so that I could just pick it up and lift it on. Now I decided that you could leave the gray, that pale gray fondant the way it is, but I decided I felt it was a little dull. Mixed with the gold, it was a little dull. So what I used there was some pearl luster. It's a um, glaze, it's a pre-mix product that um, I don't even know where I got it. I think I got it from my old boss, from my old job. She just told me to take it, I believe. But added, anyway, it was a little thick, so I added a little Everclear to it to thin it down, and I, I just sponged it onto the fondant. And what I'm doing here now quickly, <laughs> because time again, um, I just used some gold um, edible paint, luster dust, and Everclear mixed together, and I just brushed them on those on those edges. 
And now all of our wafer paper de decorations are dry. So I showed you the leaves, first of all, and then I just cut out each of these petals. Just follow the line of the wire and just cut right around it. And then just use some of your edible gold paint, the gold luster dust and Everclear, just to brush around the outside edge. And I think those turned out really pretty. And now I'm just assembling all of the petals. Just line them up staggered and wrap your floral wire, uh, tape around them. I've done this in other videos too where I slow down and show you a little bit better and I'll try to remember to add a link there for different types of petals. Um, just basically you overlap them and you add each petal one at a time and wrap your floral wire around them and continuously um, tape them together. Now I'm just using little U-shaped pieces of floral wire to stick these uh, swags onto the cake. Just remember to tell your customers, if you do this for a customer, that they are in there so that they know and they know to remove them. Just, you know, communicate with your customers. That's the best way to handle these situations. You could even add that in a contract if you feel better about that. Now to attach those leaves, I'm just using some piping gel and just adding them randomly. I just like to add extra little touches of texture and different, um, yeah, I guess texture elements even with the same medium. Even though it's rice or wafer paper, just use in different ways. And you get a really unique look. And I hope you guys like this abstract, modern wafer paper cake with a few extra different added extra touches of decorations. And I hope you give it a try. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.